Five places all come together for today's postcard from some of the top film studios in Great Britain. Our postmark today is British Film Studios. You know, I didn't know that Hove was one of the centres of the British movie industry. Well, when I say centres, did you know that Hove had one of the very first studios in filmmaking in this country? And they were making films here in the 1890s. And here are the plans of one of the studios, Wilbury Road in Hove where they could actually do their filmmaking. I find this quite incredible. And here we've got some of the earliest films shot here in Hove. Quite amazing. From Sussex to Middlesex, these next studios are called Shepparton, but they're actually in Littleton. Now, there's so much to tell you, so much going on, so much history, so much everything here at Shepparton Studios that I thought we'd better have our own official guide. And I've got Derek. Derek? Hi, Russell. Derek Threadgall. Now, you wrote the book? Uh, the History of Shepparton Studios. You wrote The History of Shepparton Studios. So that means you must know about it. Where shall we start on our tour? I suggest over there at the old manor house. Off we go, then. The manor house. <laughs> Now, to Prober and Littleton, we're heading towards the old manor house, which is actually the heart of Shepparton Studios. Derek, what was here before there was even a studio's thought of? Well, the manor house dates back to the days of Benedictine monks, way back to about 700. And it was owned by an MP called Sir Edward Nichols, who sold it in 1928 to a man called Norman Loudon, who was a Scots entrepreneur. Norman Loudon actually made the first films here in 1932, using the old house ballroom, the conservatory, and the back lot here. The first films made in 1932 went on to make, he went on to make films right way through to the beginning of the Second World War here, before he sold out. Let's go and have a look now by the River Ash. Yes. That River played Ash. an important part, didn't it? It did indeed. Okay. It really is nice, isn't it? We're at this little river Ash now, but why was such a tiny little river like this? In the middle of Middlesex, well, in the southern part of Middlesex, so important to a film industry. Well, in terms of Shepparton, uh, Alexander Corder shot the um, river scenes for Sanders of the River here. Not many people know that the original title of it was Basambo, but obviously they changed it. And it's rumoured that the owner of the studio at the time, Norman Loudon, made enough money from hiring out the back lot here at the river to build the four big stages of the studio, A, B, C and D. Ironically, Corder was here in 1933-34 and he came here and bought the place in 1946. And from 1946 to 56, Corder, Alexander uh, and great. his brothers. Uh, yes, <laughs> the great Alexander Corder ran the studio. Uh, and at that time, some of the best films and the greatest films that have been made in the British film industry were made here. Why did they come to Shepparton and not, say, Pinewood or Twickenham or Ealing? I mean, they had their own uh, styles, of course, but why Shepparton? Well, basically, Shepparton has always been known as an independent studio. Pinewood is geared to rank. Elstree was geared to ABPC, etc. And Shepparton has always been an independent studio for independent filmmakers. And this is why they came here, because they were independent. And they, they could do their own thing here. They made big pictures here. And they found what some people call this studio the seat of the pants studio. <laughs> right. Where so, things got done somehow. And they also were more innovative, therefore. Absolutely. And controversial absolutely, at times. Absolutely, absolutely. Talking about controversy, let's go over here, Derek, because you have told me that just behind this little tree here is um, the room at the top. The boathouse, just along here? Yes. 
over there, and of course that was very uh, avant-garde for its time. Yes, wasn't the it? remains of the boat house uh, that was used in room at the top uh, for the uh, seduction scene between uh, Lawrence Harvey and Heather Sears. And the boathouse has been used for many other films, but it's probably most famous for the seduction scene. Well, it looks like they rocked the boathouse because there's not much left there now. If you see the scene yourself, you'll understand why. <laughs> now let's head a few miles north into central Middlesex and the home of the famous Ealing Comedies. We're staring through a window now, trying to catch some hot gossip at the well, studios. Would we have caught a lot by staying out here you, in the old days? You certainly would, Russell, yeah. Um, this is where the, um, in, in the days of Michael Vulcan and uh, Basil Dean, this is the director's dining room. Um, they used to eat separately to the rest of the workers on site. They so would have been along here, the, would the, they? Yeah, they would have been in the main canteen, which is just along here. So that's not changed then? <laughs> the only thing that differs now um, greatly from, from those days is, is the fact that um, they never used to allow alcohol on site. Um, Didn't they? No. Apparently uh, Michael Vulcan was, uh, he was very strict about that sort of thing. Uh, but we now have a bar on site. So, um, ah, is that that there? He wouldn't have approved of that. Yeah, he wouldn't have approved of, of that at all. <clears throat> is he dead now? He is, yeah. But whatever happens, he's looking down he's, now, frowning at this. He certainly is, yeah. At the bar. Apparently there's... Probably him in the <laughs> story of trying to run us over. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, there's a story about um, when, the, when the Prince of Wales visited uh, Ealing Studios. Um, not, the, not the current Prince of Wales, but um, the one that uh, ran away with Mrs Simpson. Oh, yes. Um, he, uh, Edward VIII to become, right. yeah. yeah. Apparently he liked to drink, and um, when he when he came here, he couldn't get one. So uh, so they had to hurry round, and apparently a bottle of whiskey was found in somebody's drawer, and um, and uh, he was able to get a drink in the well, end. Probably but, uh, Mrs. Simpson attached to it somewhere <laughs> it was as probably well. Probably Michael Vulcan's drawer. <laughs> <actually>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that could have been. We know about these things. In another corner of the filmic county of Middlesex are the studios by the Thames at Twickenham. Now most famous amongst other things for making top television advertisements. But look what went on before. Ask Mark Lathbury what you'd find in a Foley studio. All kinds of surfaces um, for sound effects to be added to films. If somebody shoots a film and there's an effect missing, we will add that effect to the film. And conversely, when we make uh, music and effects tracks for foreign countries, which is just the music and the effects elements, when you take out the dialogue of, of you and I talking, if you were moving, moving your feet or doing anything, that yeah. sound would come out. So we'd recreate would. your feet moving around, running the picture and getting it exactly in sync as you're moving. And then that would go off with the music effects, a full effects track with your feet moving around, which is what the Foley are called, and then your dialogue would be, would be added in another language. Great. Yeah. Mark, shut that door. There we go. So we do this exactly to picture. We'd watch the picture. As somebody closes the door, we close the door. Now that's how it's done, isn't yeah. that clever? And what about this bit over here? I'm desperate to rustle, being well, Russell. Well, it's obviously a film that was shot in the autumn and somebody walking along in leaves. So they've sprinkled some leaves onto the grass and we recreate the sound of somebody walking. It's great. I reckon these leaves have been here a while, though. Uh, I should think they have, yes. Yeah, probably these leaves are older than Twickenham Studios by the looks of it, Mark. Possibly. <laughs> and a little bit of gravel here. Yeah. This is for your voice, your gravelly voice. Yes, yes, we're on to the beach now. Pebbly oh, am I? Yeah. Gordon Bennett, I wouldn't like to go on this beach. It's filthy. And there's straw <laughs> on it. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness knows what else. Twickenham by the sea.
Now we'll cross over the border to Pinewood in Buckinghamshire to meet someone who was very big in films. My mum, Joan. Now on location in St Anton's Sea in Lancashire. So, Mum, what was it like working at Pinewood? When did you actually start working oh, there? Oh, the war was still on. And uh, Pinewood uh, then, of course, had barbed wire. Um, I worked for Lloyd's Insurance Company. And uh, over the other side of the barbed wire was the uh, Crown Film Unit. And what did they do? Uh, well, they did Western approaches, any information um, to do with the war. Or propaganda and that stuff. Pro yes, that's right. And, and that was where, of course, I met Dickie Attenborough. He was in the RAF then. We've told everybody this story. Now, could we hear it from the horse's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely true. I mean, I do feel that I should sort of go, you know, Lord uh, Attenborough, but I did know him uh, as Dickie Attenborough, and he used to pay my fare from Uxbridge to Pinewood. Of course, I was there when it was the uh, stars, making of young stars. So uh, in the canteen. The Pinewood starlets. Oh, well, that's as they, as they were then, yeah. Uh, and, of course, everyone used to go to the canteen then, so you were in a queue with Anthony Newley, Joan Collins, Diana Dawes, all the youngsters. Because what did I they like to eat? Anything? Oh, was was I Joan can't. Collins watching, <laughs> watching her figure like oh. you've watched your figure <laughs> over the years? We've watched it. <laughs> Bro. No, no, no. Well, I mean, I was slim then, of I course. Know. I know. We've got a picture of you slim you have representing good. the art department. <laughs> <laughs> the origins of Primewood are like Shepperton, around a house, in this case, Heatherden Hall. So how did it get its name? Pinewood. Dr Bergen was a parliamentary board of trade, and in 1936, he was greeting a lot of people here at Pinewood. You may wonder how it got its name. Here are the pines, but the origins of the name of Pinewood. And I've got a newspaper cutting here from 1936. And Dr Bergen said that before making his speech, he consulted a reference book of arboriculture, and there found that compared with the majestic pine, the holly is but a stunted tree. Now, considering that the place was packed ten deep with Americans from Hollywood, that went down very well indeed. Well, we're in September and uh, this isn't snow. They've just finished filming here a big, big movie at Pinewood. If you look over there, there's not one snowflake. And this stuff is sort of very soft. It's almost paper-like cotton woolly I don't know what it is but obviously it's kept its color its whiteness and its brightness but you know these formal gardens here at Heatherden Hall now Pinewood haven't changed one bit since Dr Drury Levin used to entertain the Uxbridge and Hillingdon band on these lawns back in the late 19th century Whoopee! This is the largest freshwater tank in Europe and it's here at Pinewood where they've just finished making a big movie, Star Wars, and they're clearing it all up so there's no water in now. But you know uh, films such as Sink the Bismarck and the Titanic and you know where the Queen Mary rolled over in one of the James Bond movies? Well, all of that was done here. Oh, and the heroes of Telemark where the train went into the water. All of that was done in this huge film tank here. From Star Wars to the Carry On films, Pinewood is also home to James Bond. When you consider that Pinewood Studios, rather like Shepperton Studios, started life around uh, an estate and, and a big house, which is what they both did. And those grounds of Heatherden Hall have been reduced to 100 acres, which is now Pinewood Studios. And of course, the living end, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> 